California. So I've been using these Cabela boxes. You can get them at Bass Pro. I like them because they got the waterproof seal. And they're actually identical, probably, and manufactured by Bass Mafia. Um, I have a couple of the Bass Mafia boxes, and even the dividers are interchangeable. But these are 5 to $10 cheaper than the Bass Mafia. Yeah, they're kind of colored. I think they're gray, but I don't really mind that. I can still see in them. Main thing is the waterproof gasket. These are 3700 size, which I usually use the 3600 because I like uh, being able to divide my type up into more specific categories, and I just find the 3600 m more um, easier for me to use on my boat. But for travel, these 3700s are hard to beat. They hold a lot. And like I said, waterproof, it's nice. You can get rained on as long as you don't open your box. Your lures don't rust. So, so oh, lipless. We'll start there. Um, I'm not actually sure where I got this. Oh, I did get this. This is from an Ollie's. This is a Lucky Craft that I got on a discount bin. It's the LVR D15. It's a rather large lipless. I like these big ones. Um, definitely catch bass on it, largemouth. But a lure this size, if you happen to be in saltwater, this is a killer. I've caught redfish, stripers, trout, all sorts of things on a lip list this size. So I come always in a travel box have one slightly larger than the normal lip list. Um, I just so happen to have this Lucky Craft because I found it at a discount store. Change out the hooks though um, and split rings. These are and this one's a little off. These are Spro split rings with Gamagetsu trebles. Um, run the smaller one in the back, but it's always the back hook on a lipless that gets caught up on stuff, so I tend to run the smaller hook back there if I can. Unique rattle. Great bait. And then have a couple of these red eye shads from Strike King. I'm from Florida, so you never go anywhere without a gold. And when you got lipless, it's hard to beat a crawfish color. But these are the two knockers. Just something different. Everyone throws um, a regular rattle trap or cordell, cotton cordell spot. Very distinct, high frequency sound. I like this. Sometimes I just think same lure, slightly different presentation. Is the difference. Um, and like I said, hard to beat the gold, hard to beat the craw color. And uh, I almost exclusively buy these red eye shads in the two tap. I order them. Uh, hooks are replaced, running an EWG, uh, Gamagatsu, and front and rear. I feel like the way bass swipe at these, that EWG just holds, the, holds on to the fish a little better. Um, here's just a regular cotton cordell spot. Cheapest one I got. These things are like two bucks, but they're a little higher frequency rattle. Got this in like kind of a undescript shad color. This is a killer. This thing catches fish everywhere. First, one of the first lures I ever owned. Actually, my dad bought me one of these when I was like five or six years old, and I still keep it in my box to the day. To the day till today and you hear that different rattle totally different than the two tap or even lucky craft or even a regular rattle trap um, and then I have these two I actually had the special order of these can't find them anywhere anymore these are silent lipless so you can hear the hooks that's just the sound of the split rings moving um, two different shad patterns here switched out EWG hooks Gamagatsu um, yeah, silent lipless. Sometimes it's the only thing they'll hit. Or you'll get more hits than a guy throwing 
say they spot these are identical in the terms of what they're trying to mimic they're both trying to mimic a shad but sometimes bass get used to that sound like you've been caught enough times with that rattle you avoid it this comes by silent it's a reaction bite they just nail it and uh i've become a big believer in silent lipless there's a couple other companies make them um, but these Rapala Ripping Chats, I really like them. And man, these Kamigatsu hooks are so sharp. It's almost hard to handle these. So yeah, that's my arsenal of lipless I travel with, just in case. Got a couple little baits here. This is the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. It's a goby bait. Um, this is really versatile. Out here in California, they definitely eat gobies. In Florida, they don't really have gobies. We have darters that look very similar to this. Um, just great to be able to pitch this around trees or drag it across uh, sand or gravel. It's just uh, bass key in on little bottom feeding fish. Um, so very handy. It's kind of weedless. It's got a little weed guard, but the hook is right there. Um, definitely caught a lot of fish on that. And you never know, you might want to catch them crappy or the bass are focusing in on small fish. So I always keep one or two tiny baits in my box. This is a little tiny crankbait that I got off of eBay. Couldn't even tell you who makes it. It's probably from China. And kind of a ghost minnow, shiner color. This thing is a killer. I have caught up to five pound bass on that little thing. I also feel that micro baits are overlooked a lot. Uh, can't really place the hooks on these though. It's hard to find anything better in these tiny hooks. And if you put bigger hooks on, it totally ruins the action. So it's the only thing is, I run this on six pound line or less. Sometimes four is better. It forces you to slow down so you don't pull those hooks out. That's the key to running these little baits. Next up are jigs. Or I should say flipping style jigs. Well, I got one hair jig. This was just in my box at home. I was coming out here to California, fishing that deep water. And that's kind of what hair jigs are good for, so I figured I'd throw it in the box. I bought this originally um, to fish on Rainbow River in, back in Florida. This is a Nichols hair jig. I forget the exact model, but I've definitely caught fish on this even in Florida. Didn't end up throwing it here in California, but it's always good to have. I got a couple finesse jigs in here. A couple different brands. Got, um, this is a Bass Pro Shop brand. I forget what this, I think this is Strike King, all black. And this is one of the Iconelli's style. I forget which company makes it. I actually like that one. It's got the a camera guard cover on the paint on the head it works really well but basic colors just the ones I had in my box back home black never got on a bottle black black blue it's, works everywhere um, and the finesse jig and you know kind of a, any kind of pumpkin green pumpkin this is green pumpkin with a little brown this is the kind of trailer I like to run on my uh, finesse jigs this is uh, Small beaver, but uh, reaction innovation. Definitely caught some fish on this on this trip. Uh, in case I got into some real flipping, here's a gambler jig. This one's got the split weed garden. I'm a big fan of this actually. It in heavy brush, it really helps keep that jig from hooking up on the brush. But because of that split V. I don't even trim these weed guards. I usually trim my weed guards, but this one, the hook just pops out. Um, I had two of these. I lost one on Clear Lake the other day. Usually throw a little beaver bait on here. Um, pumpkin, never go wrong, like, again. Uh, this was a jig somebody gave me, my buddy uh, Real Drag. Follow him, Real Drag on Instagram. This is one of those keeper hook jigs. Um, use this jig a bit. I like it a lot. Um, I'm still not sure about these keeper hooks. Seems like a good idea. Um, 
but yeah, it was the pumpkin purple jig I had in my box home, at home, so I threw it in the box. Never uh, bad to travel with jigs. Sometimes the difference between a small fish and a big fish is just switching to a jig instead of a crawbait. So here we got some jerk style baits. Let's start with this. This is actually a Yozuri wake bait. It's a tiny minnow wake bait. And I didn't end up using this very much this time, but if I ever find bass feeding on minnows on the surface, this thing is amazing. Um, sometimes a soft fluke is good if they're in the weeds, but if they're out in the open killing small bait, this is awesome. And it's just right under the water, so it's almost like a top water. It's so much fun to watch them hit. Nice little white bait. And uh, got a couple small jerk baits here. I got a Yozuri and a Lucky Craft. Uh, found these both in discount bins in Florida. I guess not a lot of people fish jerk baits this small in Florida. This little Lucky Craft pointer has. Um, this has caught a lot of fish for me. Uh, it's a ghost minnow. Works pretty much in any. It's just got enough flash that it works in dark water. It's clear enough that I've caught stuff in crystal clear water. Um, got one in a little golden pattern. We got a lot of golden colored minnows and shiners in Florida. So always keep one of these in my tackle box. Don't take up a lot of room. These things will catch big fish though. It's a reaction bite. They, they just see it, especially if it's a school. Catch a few. The next thing you know, the big ones are in after it. Both of these are great. The pointer and the little Yozuri. I forget what this one is called, but. I love them both. And then I got two of these rip stops. This is like more of your traditional, like modern, I should say, not traditional, more of your modern jerk bait. They're suspenders. Um, this one floats. This one's a suspender. So this one you stop and it'll float up a little. This one you stop and it just stops. And uh, Twitch these on slack line. Basically, I get the Rapalas because they're the ones I can find. They're everywhere. Um, and they're not expensive. It's hard for me to spend a lot of money on treble hook baits because uh, where I fish a lot, these things are destined to get caught on something, on a tree, on a underwater branch, or weeds. So, yeah, Rapalas. Not too expensive, still under 20 bucks, and they work. And here's a giant Lucky Craft. Not giant, but pretty big. Um, bigger than I normally would throw. And in a chartreuse, which isn't my normal color for jerk bait. But found this in a discount bin. It's got a profile size. Figured in case I get any dark water. I ended up trying to use this to catch some stripers. Uh, didn't really get any luck on it, but it's a beautiful bait. If it were in a more natural color, I'd probably throw it all the time. But at some point, this chartreuse blue back is going to come in handy. And when you're traveling, you never know what you're going to get. So always throw a big jerk bait just in case. Next up, square bills. Got one deep diving. This is the Rapala um, scatter app. This thing's got a super erratic, all over the place action. Um, it goes about 8 to 10 feet, depending on what weight line you're running. Switch out the hooks. These are some, uh, what are these? These are the KVD Mustad hooks. They're pretty good. Uh, this is in a, obviously, a bluegill pattern. Super clear water. This thing has uh, definitely caught some fish on this. It's always good to have one or two realistic crankbaits. Sometimes that's the difference in clear water. And I feel like in dirty water, if as long as it's a light color, it doesn't matter if it's realistic, but it doesn't hurt. So yeah, my one deepish diving crankbait I bought with me. I don't do a lot of deep diving crankbait work in Florida. And several square bills. And the one thing you'll notice about every square bill I bought, brought, I got a couple different patterns. Got three shad, three different size, 1.5, 2.5, and this is the six. And then I got a crawl color and a bluegill pattern. These are all KVD. This is 
um, a lucky strike. This is Rick Klun. Goes kind of shad, but all of them are silent. I love silent square bills. Not that I haven't caught stuff on square bills with a rattle. It's just not my thing. As in with the silent um, lipless. I feel like more people throw rattled crankbaits than non rattled crankbaits. So if I can be a little more subtle, a lot of times I feel like it's going to be um, the flash they're going to see and the the action they're going to go for, not so much the sound. Um, not that they can't work, just my preference. But yeah, so a couple of the 1.5 size. Um, always have a bluegill one. Never hurts, especially going through trees. Obviously, sexy shad, kind of ghost minnow. Proven color, everyone loves it. Never go anywhere without a craw colored square bill. Doesn't really look like a crawfish, but when it's going through the cover, man, it just looks, it's just, they react to it as a fleeing crawfish. And their bright red and orange color really helps. And then the bigger ones. This is just to get bigger bites. It's kind of funny though. Another sales bin crankbait here, or bait. I got this out of a sales bin at the local tackle shop. I guess nobody bought it. And I've thrown this a bunch of times and I've caught a lot of fish on it. All two pounds or under. No big ones, just a lot of little ones. Just barely fits in the mouth of a two pounder. Never guess. But this one dives way deeper than the 1.5s. This is the 2.5. I just picked this up. I haven't yet to try it, but I'm sure at some point it's gonna come in handy. Both in shad, never gonna wrong with shad in square bill colors. I pack this box tight if you haven't noticed. It also helps with stuff from moving around too much. Next up is swim jigs. I love swim jigs. So I have a couple different basic patterns or colors I always bring. Uh, as you can see, these are the ones I actually used on this trip. Um, some bluegill colored ones uh, matched with a bumpkin, kind of bluegill colored trailer. It's awesome. I love having a golden shiner color. Um, this one is a Dirty Jigs golden shiner. Got it on a, uh, got a uh, Gambler Easy Swimmer um, in Copperfield on the back. It's kind of a bluegill shiner color. It's awesome. And of course, the shad kind of. This is actually a sh shad. I was selling this around a bunch of. Um, we were around a bunch of crappie. And this was the closest thing we could find to a crappie. Uh, definitely got a lot of attention. Throwing it out with a uh, little easy swimmer trail on the back. Um, these, that one and these three are all Picasso uh, swim jigs. They're the, the half ounce. The one I use the most is half ounce. I really like them. I like the head. They got a good keeper. Um, good sharp hook. I really fall in love with the Picasso. They're definitely my go-to swim jig right now. Mostly I love the head detail. This is the newer one. I just picked these up in California. This is the one uh, this is even lighter. I forget how light this one is, but it's lighter than the half ounce. But even the smaller head, you can see the detail. It's amazing. Um, this golden shiner color is my go-to in Florida. I throw this more than any other color, and I have caught a lot of fish on this color. The bluegill is number two, probably. We do have some shad. Uh, the Z-Man was the first swim jig I really embraced. This is the bluegill one. Um, still a great swim jig. They just changed them recently and I don't see them available as much so I don't have quite as many. And it's hard to talk about swim jigs without dirty jigs, the California swim jig, Tactical Bassin, Matt Allen, Tim Little. This 
this right here, this exact jig has caught me. This exact one, all trimmed down. You can see it's a little beat up, missing some of the things. I've caught dozens of fish on this right here in all different lakes, different colored water, all paired with this uh, Easy Swimmer by Gambler. It's just nice, big size. It's got the undulation of the skirt. This is a great lure. Bass. I have a hard time saying no to this. I have a couple of these Freedom Head swim jigs. I um, haven't used them a lot. Uh, as you can tell, I did use this one. I have a little trailer on there. I caught these because you can run them. Texas rig. I fish through a lot of grass and a lot of trees and even with the swim jigs sometimes that brush guard just is not enough and uh, I got these over the winter I haven't a chance to use them as much as I want but this is definitely going to be um, something I'm trying out this spring I got two you know in a bluegill color uh, needed a black and blue swim jig so here it is um, just throw them in the box for California just in case you never know um, didn't use them yet, but they're here and they're weedless, super weedless. And I got one under spin just in case, uh, with a Kai Tech on it. It's a, just want to say, uh, fish head. I tried it, uh, out on, uh, for some spots the other day. I think I caught one on it. It's a nice little thing to have. It's it's like a spinnerbait, but just a little bit more subtle. It's awesome. All right. Talk about spinnerbaits and chatterbaits and buzzbaits. Here we go. Buzzbaits. I'm in California. It's not. It's just the beginning of the spring. Why am I bringing buzzbaits? Just in case. I'd hate there for there to be a buzzbait bite and not have a buzzbait. I cut the skirts off all my buzz baits, run them with uh, some kind of feature bait. These are both uh, swim baits. This one, I actually placed the blade with a clear plastic four blade. I feel like in clear water, this gives me a little advantage because it just creates a bubble trail, but they don't see this big metal uh, flash, which I think sometimes in clear water just, you know, like anything else, if it doesn't look real, they're not going to go for it. But these Strike King uh, spinner or buzz baits, these are probably my favorite overall buzz bait. They're for sale everywhere. Great buzz. This has a nice squeak to it. A little less with the plastic, but like I said, this is more subtle. I think a buzz bait bite is probably my favorite of all time. People say frog bite. I like buzz bait bite. Just so aggressive. So just have two just in case. Didn't end up using them at all, but. Um, like ran into uh, Matt Allen from Tactical Bass, and we were making fun of our buddy Josh St. John. Apparently, I was uh, missed out. He'll throw up a bait about any time of the year. By the time we went fishing, he didn't do it. I think we might have teased him a little too much about it. But uh, Josh does uh, J and J S baits, swim baits. I have one of them in my box. I'll show it to you. It's awesome. Uh, Chatter baits. I don't throw chatterbaits. Never do. I own a couple, so they're in my box. Um, this is another Freedom Head one. This one's really cool. It's got a hand tied uh, hair and feather skirt. I just bought it because it's on sale. Never tried it. Got a white one. I've thrown this one a couple times. This is a little Z Man chatterbait. Um, just haven't warmed up to the chatterbait. I know everyone loves them. So I have them here just in case. In case I wander into a chatterbait bite, I don't want to not have one. And that's how I feel about spinnerbaits. Not a big spinnerbait guy either, but when they're biting spinnerbaits, they bite spinnerbaits. So I travel with a few. Uh, I just put rubber bands on these so they fit in the box a little better. Um, they don't keep popping up out of the box. Uh, this is a Gary Yamanamoto. It's my white chartreuse, um, classic spinnerbait color. Uh, 
yet again another sale has been purchased. I've never actually thrown this one yet, but sometimes chartreuse white spinnerbait is the ticket. And I like the painted blades. It's a nice touch. This is just a um, typical white spinnerbait. I uh, forget the brand. This is just from Walmart. A couple bucks. Got a Kitek, white Kitek. This is actually the spinnerbait I throw the most. Um, it works everywhere. It's a lighter one. I do believe in a smaller profile spinnerbait. I feel like it's easier for the bass to actually get the hook. When you get into the bigger ones, the longer ones, you need a trailer hook. They hit the blades a lot. I don't really like that. So, white. With willow, this is a willow Colorado leaf, and I feel like that's in silver. It pretty much covers all the bases. It's a small Colorado, puts out a little more thump. I'm more of a willow blade guy, but the small Colorado, I feel like it adds a little extra action. And then these are two that I just got pretty excited about. I love the size. If you look at the size of the arm, these are nickels. And I got these in more of a bluegill color. These are actually the spinnerbaits I am going to throw a lot in Florida this spring. I love the painted blades, the darker skirt. I feel like in Florida, in the darkish, brackish water, this darker color is just going to do well. But I just got these right before my trip, so I threw them in the box just in case. Um, didn't really run into a spinnerbait bite on this trip, but like I said, when they're biting spinnerbaits, just like anything else, you want to have them. And got a couple different styles just in case. But if I were only going to have one, it would be this one. Famously, it's been said, if you're going to have the spinnerbait, you can have it any color as long as it's white. Not quite a believer in that, but uh, not a disbeliever either, so I always have a white one available. And here we go, frogs. Wasn't sure there'd be a frog bite this early in the spring, but, you know, they're small. And when there's a frog bite, it's about the best thing other than a buzzbait bite. To me uh, got a black one got a little bigger white belly one pretty much cover both spectrums of uh, either dark or light you know not traveling with a lot you want to have be able to cover your bases at least one of each it's always good uh, got this poppin shad just in case we were in any thick cover um, in the clear I have yet to throw this looks like a good bait um, I can see this working really well in thick pads or thick hydrilla. It's more of a popper walker, uh, but it's a little different profile than the frogs. Uh, Strike King, Pop and Chat. This is this weedless saltwater bait I got. The hook kind of pops out like that. Um, it's kind of a twitch bait, jerk bait. It just barely floats. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. I get hit a lot, but I bad hookup ratio but it's hard to find anything in a minnow profile that you can throw in really heavy cover and uh, back in Florida uh, this definitely will get through some of that cover and sometimes when they're hitting the top and you don't want to throw a frog or they're not hitting a frog they're hitting more of a minnow this is coming handy um, I've been trying to figure out how to improve the hookup ratio on this not sure yet but cool little bait. I forget who makes it, but I like it. And then last but not least, top water. Everyone loves top water. Came to California, couldn't come without a couple waffle poppers. Look at those. Self explanatory. It's hard bait, kind of love a buzz bait. Great. I got the. 110 and the 75. The 75 is the newest. They've got a lot of little improvements on the 75. This thing is, I think, secretly the best whopper plopper. But I brought a couple just in case. Um, there was a top water bite. Didn't get around to it so much, but they're awesome. Brought two different locking baits. This is the evergreen in a black and this is the 
Realis and kind of a ghost minnow. They're both smaller walking baits, but I don't know. Just have them just in case. They both have a slightly different walk. I like this black color a lot. I feel like uh, it's hard to go wrong with a dark spook walking bait. And this thing has a great action, actually. Uh, the Realis, I haven't thrown it as much, but it was fit a profile that I need to bring with me. The Torpedo. Ooh, tiny Torpedo. I'm more a fan of the Teen Torpedo, which is the next size down, but these little prop baits, man, hadn't got it right. There's a reason why these have been being manufactured for so many years. Like, I think this was the first topwater bait I ever bought was one of these, and I still buy them. Sometimes you just throw this thing on, and little twitches and pauses, nothing else will hit top water. Man, I have caught some big fish on this and the smaller one. I don't really like the bigger one, this size and down. Awesome. Just got it in a frog color. It's more about the white belly than anything. And then my favorite top water, as you can tell, I have three different sizes, four different, or three different colors. Ghost minnow is obviously my favorite. Lucky Craft Gunfish. This thing is, I just can't go tell you enough. This Ghost Minnow color is amazing. Um, I throw this 95 a lot, this 75, uh, which you can't seem to find so much in the States anymore. I order these off of eBay. This thing catches fish when nothing else will, when they're super finicky and don't want to hit. Um, Actually, this black and yellow one is the first one I ever got. Three, my four original ones I bought, I lost all to big fish. That just, I throw this on six pound line, so sometimes it's risky, but man, fish love this thing. And then I got the 115, just in case they're hitting a little bigger. The thing about like the gunfish, it's like a popper and a walker. You can pop it if you pull it straight, and if you start twitching it, it'll start walking. If you twitch it really fast, it acts like a stick bait and kind of goes under the surface just a little bit. Only lure I've ever caught two bass at a time on. Gunfish. Awesome. All right, that's the hard baits. Soft baits. Here we go, my soft baits. I'm not going to take these all out of the box. Um, start with flukes. Always got flukes. Flukes are one of my confident baits. I got several different styles. Here's one I lost the tail to. It's one of the flash arrow or fish arrow. Uh, fish arrow, flashing J split tail. These are both zoom super flukes. Got the Benito. And the good old Sluggo. This logo, man, this is my favorite topwater fluke. This thing just twitches on the surface so well. Got a couple of these big bite baits. I've lost the eyes on both of these. These are the warm mouth. These on a shaky head for bed fish. Oh my god. I caught a five, a six, and a seven all in one day back in Florida on this on a little shaky head. Got some small swim baits. Easy Swimmers, Kitex. These are great for uh, trailers, on j jig heads on their own, on the underspin. Just got to have them. And then my favorite bait, pretty much of all time right now. Reaction Innovation, Kinky Beaver. Just like this. I just cut this off. Where I put my rod away. Three quarter ounce, tungsten weight, pegged, EWG, super line hook, and the pumpkin blue swirl, or the pumpkin with the June bug, or the black. This one's on the swing head. I love them on swing heads. This is pumpkin with the black blue. As you can tell, I like the pumpkin swirl colors, or the split colors. This was the one that I caught my PB on. 10.12 ounces, 10 pounds, 12 ounces on this. 
I had, this whole tray was full. I've gone through a few even on this trip. But yeah, kinky beaver. Got some Lego beavers and small beavers. These are mostly for trailers or if I was punching mats. Got these yum kind of beaver creature baits. Also good for thick mats. Got some Ned Rig stuff. Some TRDs. Just in case. Actually caught a lot of fish on this um, on this trip. Uh, on Lake Comanche with my buddy Justin. That's what I caught almost all my fish on that day. Variation of punching craws. Got a bunch of got a little Ned Rig head in there. A bunch of the BB crickets in a couple different colors. Kind of a black blue and then kind of a craw. I think this is California craw. And then uh, the green pumpkin. Got a couple more. I forget who makes these. I think this is Big Bite Baits. It's more of a craw trailer as well. Usually most mostly use these for jig trailers. The BB cricket for punching heavy mats. Stickos. Um, these are some big ones, the seven inch ones. I got the six inch ones. I'm out of my uh, orange and black. This is my favorite color of Sticko, which is like the Bass Pro Shop Cinco brand. I was running this as a Ned Rig the other day out at Clear Lake. Caught a couple fish on that. Got a couple of the Gambler Fat Aces in the golden shiner kind of color. And then some more Stickos in a split blue black or a June bug pumpkin seed my favorite colors I feel like you can fish the pumpkin seed June bug anywhere works for clear water and dark water got some big easy swim baits in case we need to buzz some cover a couple different colors some dark ones the, this one this is like a perch color they call it but man I feel like it's the best it's got a little blue, a little gold, a little silver. Got the shad color. Got the dark black with the flake, red flake, pumpkin. More of this copper field color. Super popular. But these are some of my favorite lures of all time. As you can see, I have it rigged up several different ways. Several different sizes. And three different colors. Uh, this is again the flash the fish arrow split tail flash J They got a little foil in them that they claim sounds like Crushing bone This fluke man, you can run it as a top water let it sink bounce it off a of bed This is one of my favorite lures of all time right now. And I've used this everywhere Definitely caught some fish on it on this trip, too. And pretty much everyone that sees one asks me about it. So those are my soft baits. Next up is the swim bait box. This is new. A lot of new stuff in here. Two different S waivers. The 168, the 120. Um, I'm looking forward to bringing this back. I picked these the 120 up here in California um, I'm gonna definitely throw this in Florida The 168 this is the first F S waiver I ever bought pretty much go everywhere with it. It fits in your box You can throw it on regular bass gear Got some good strikes on this out when we were out fishing with a uh, Jay Parrish on this trip Didn't get any but man they did not They followed they would swipe he'd go back and Catch them on Cinco's, but man, they loved this bait. This is my buddy Josh's from uh, I went fishing with Unclear Lake. This is a floating bluegill wake bait. This thing is amazing. I'm going to throw this a bunch more this summer in Florida. I was kind of scared to throw it because it's like number 179, but you know, it's a lure. It's supposed to catch bass. Josh assures me he can get me more of them. Here's a big Lucky Kraut that I discount bin bait I found again. This is another pointer. This is the 
II, I believe, or 11. I don't know. It's a big swim bait. Got it for five bucks. Haven't tried it yet, but it's super well made. I love the joint. Um, I'm thinking about painting it a different color. Don't really have this pickerel color going so much for our fish. A little Savage Gear uh, bluegill bait. Uh, I got brought this with me just to throw on beds and stuff. Um, haven't really tried it yet. Took the stinger hook off. Just used the main hook. It's pretty good. Picked up a couple of these sneaky peats on uh, the recommendation of Chuck Reagan. Um, haven't thrown them yet, but man, look out, Florida. These are coming your way. I think these are going to be money. I got this kind of golden and this golden shiner kind of trippy swirl pattern and a shad pattern. Man, these are going to be money. And, you know, in California, they're all about this big swim bait, so I had to pick up some. Um, but I think I'm going to pretty much travel with one of these from now on. Because this will catch stripers, this will catch bass, and like you're not getting, not everybody is throwing these glide baits yet, so you're getting a presentation that pretty amazing. And then Huddleston's got a weedless perch, a big perch, and then a six inch shad. Haven't tried these yet. I'm gonna slow roll these in Florida. But I'm here in California, so I bought them. They're in my box, just in case. Here's a bluegill swim bait that somebody gave me. I don't even know who makes it. Uh, Sawgrass Bassin actually gave this to me. It's out of a lucky tackle box. If you know who made it, let me know. Swims well. I think I should paint it a different color as well. I'm thinking about getting into lure painting. So, But yeah, these huds. Didn't get a chance to throw them on this trip. Uh, just bought them while I was out here. This weedless one, though, man. I think this perch weedless hut is going to be the ticket on some of those clear water lakes out in Florida. Maybe even the river. I'm going to definitely take a trip where I just bring these uh, swim baits to the Rainbow River just to watch them all swim and see how the bass react in that super clear water. And had to get a shad colored one. I don't know. This is. I think they're going to work what, great in Florida. Not everybody throws them yet. So yeah, that's my swim bait box. It's own special box just for swim baits. I'm going to have to get a bigger box though. This one's running out of room. hooks and weights and this is my travel hook box I take some of that toolbox liner and it's just cut out and stuck in there with some spray adhesive I got this idea from Fluke Master it really stops your hooks from migrating between these slots on these boxes because they I hate that these are all mixed up right now just because I've been grabbing hooks out of here this whole trip got a couple sections of jig heads and swim bait heads, some shaky heads, some wobble heads, some of my homemade wobble heads, a couple weighted swim bait hooks, some tiny crappie jigs just in case. Got my normal offset worm hooks, some Gamagatsu's 1 and 2 aught. Got actually this lure, the Lunker City Sluggo hook. I really like these hooks for flukes they got this little straight bend so that the fluke doesn't ride up on the bend and get this super straight uh, fluke with these I need to get more of those they're awesome some flipping hooks snouts type some smaller EWGs my big monster EWGs for the big swim baits and big jerk baits and big Cinco's, these are seven and six hot. Uh, Gamagatsu super hooks, man. These things are. This is what made those flash arrows fishable. And then some more swim bait hooks. 
just in case, some big wide gap ones, some weighted ones, uh, the screw lock system, and like I said, sprayed on adhesive uh, toolbox liner, just keeps all the hooks from moving around. Again, a waterproof box, stop things from getting rusted even if it gets wet. Same thing with my hook, with my weights. Got some tungstens, some heavier tungstens. Look, crack my box on all. Got these weightless bullets. It's great for pulling plastics through grass. Just screw right on the top. These things are awesome. Gambler makes these. They used to be made by Reaction Innovation, but now Gambler. Same thing, some bobber stops and some more weightless bullets just to pull through cover. Those kind of slip on light bobber stops. Hook some nail weights, split shots, some lightweight bullets, some keepers and swivels, some screw keepers just in case, more tungsten, a little waterproof box, keep everything dry. Scale, I didn't get to really use it this time, just here in California, you never know, you're gonna catch a record breaker. Piss of fun, these are rod straps. Really handy for strapping your rods together. They're padded Velcro, so they don't tear into your rods at all. I love these. Bass Pro Shop Lure Keeper. In case you have a trouble hook bait on your rod, you want to take it off. Puts right on. Keeps the hooks from getting trapped. Assortment of line for leaders. Got 8 pound, 12 pound, 20 pound fluoro, and 12 pound uh, mono. I run braid to leader, like I said, so it's nice to be able to mix it up. Uh, I use a lot of fluoro for the heavier stuff. It doesn't nick. Um, and then anything top water, I use a mono leader. Here's my GoPro bat box, a little tackle warehouse nod. I run double uh, hero sessions. These are the fours. Some spare batteries, memory cards plug need to charge anything. Also a waterproof box. This is a little husky you can get from Home Depot. Fits my stuff perfectly. And that's it. That's everything I brought with me to California. I guess I'll load it all in the box for you. And the bag. Oh. Also got a lure, just in case, take measure. And that's what it all packs down to. It's enough gear to go fishing in California for three weeks. Pretty much caught fish in every lake we went to. Uh, even caught some stripers off the beach. Um, pretty much used my tackle, even out with guides. Uh, I'll give you more of an in-depth review on those rods later on. But uh, yeah, awesome way to travel, guys. Signing out.